Hey, how's it going? This is Brian. I am TCMB371 on the Alta Owners Forums and BW Haskell on Instagram. So shoot me a follow if you haven't already. Uh, post a lot of stuff, riding the bike, etc. Pretty cool stuff. Thought I'd make a video about how to install the Alta multi tool software on your machine. Uh, I'll also go over how to use the software a little bit and go through some of its features and really show you what. Uh, you can see. Now the purpose of the multi-tool software is really to maintain the bikes, uh, perform uh, some some resets in some cases, uh, as well as clear codes and things like that. You'll be able to monitor battery health by seeing all the voltage voltages for the p-groups um, and there are about 450 different data points coming off the bike and you'll be able to log every single one of them in real time. All right, so to start, you need a Ubuntu or Linux, well, Linux-based operating system. I choose Ubuntu, that's my preference. And there are two ways or three ways of going about this. Uh, first, you can download this uh, Oracle VirtualBox Virtual Machine Manager uh, from your Windows-based machine and run Ubuntu uh, through this virtual machine. Or two, you can uh, install Ubuntu as a permanent operating system on your machine so that every time it boots, it essentially uh, loads into Ubuntu or your Linux uh, operating system of your choice. So I'll use VirtualBox for this demonstration and you can follow along with that. Uh, if you don't need to follow these instructions, I recommend skipping ahead. I will post links to the quote chapters in this video so that you can skip along and revert back as needed and I hope this is super helpful. Okay so inside virtual box manager we'll click new. We will select the name of the virtual machine so I'll simply just say Ubuntu dash Alta and make sure your type defaults to Linux and your version uh, defaults to Ubuntu. And your machine folder, this is a directory on your machine uh, where it will store this virtual box, basically the virtual disk, etc. So pick, pick a location there. Now for memory size, the multi-tool software itself doesn't really require much in terms of memory. I happen to have a buttload on my machine here, so I'll just allocate um, uh, two gigabytes. And so we'll want to create a virtual disk now. So we'll go ahead and click create. The file location, this is the uh, actual file location on your Windows machine where this will be saved. So we'll just leave that as the default. Now for file size, this is essentially your hard drive for your virtual machine. And you'll want to actually allocate about 20 gigabytes. Um, and the reason for this is because the log files that are pulled off the bike do tend to get quite large at times, depending on how long you've uh, kept the bike running. So you'll want to allocate enough space to contain all of those. In hard disk file type, we will select virtual hard disk and we'll leave this, this checkbox here as dynamically allocated uh, so that it can just distribute all the files on the drive. So we'll go ahead and click create. Next, we'll go ahead and start the Ubuntu Alta virtual, mach virtual machine that we just created. Next, you'll be prompted to select the ISO file that contains the boot information. So we'll click that file prompter, go out and select that ISO file. Now I did select Ubuntu 64-bit for the virtual machine so make sure you're installing the same uh, in terms of bit for the virtual machine as the ISO. So I downloaded the 64-bit version of Ubuntu straight from the website and I'm using 18.04.2 uh, 
I think you'll be okay with anything roughly around version 16 and above, but really the latest, the greatest should be fine. So we'll go ahead and click start. And here's where the virtual box will boot into that ISO and start the initial the installation of the operating system. Okay, so we begin by clicking install Ubuntu. You'll select your keyboard language, mine is English, and we'll click continue. We'll select normal installation and we'll leave the download updates while installing Ubuntu checked. Now this can be kind of worrying, but don't worry about what it says. It's really only referring to that 20 gig allotment that we set up for this virtual box. So it's basically just preparing the disk for installation. So just click install now and we'll go ahead and click continue. Next, we'll select your time zone. This is just for the operating system, of course. So I'll select LA, I'm down in the San Diego area, and then click continue. All right, so this is where you'll select your computer name, select a username, and input a password for that username, as well as input your personal name. So what I recommend you do is keep all of this quite simple. What I'll do is I'll tell the installation that my name is Redshift and I'll leave the username as Redshift as well and I will just say Redshift as the password again. Now of course you don't have to use Redshift. I recommend you use something that uh, is unique to you. Uh, pick a username and of course perhaps use a more complex password than, um, than Redshift. And certainly don't use the same password as your username. So don't use your username as your password. So we'll click login automatically and then click continue. And now the installation begins. It may take a few minutes, so I will go ahead and skip through ahead and come back when it's done. Okay, so you may be prompted to restart the computer. So just go ahead and restart it. Uh, this will just, of course, restart your virtual box. And when it restarts, it'll prompt you to remove the install medium. You don't have to worry about that. Just click enter. And now your virtual machine will load into Ubuntu. All right, so here we are in the Ubuntu virtual machine. Now, one of the first things I recommend you do is increase the screen size. Uh, it defaults to 800 by 600. So if you have a larger monitor with a larger resolution, you're going to want to increase that. First, it'll ask you to click through some initial configuration. I don't like to send system information. And then you're all ready to go. So we'll click done. Now down the bottom left, we'll click show applications and start typing resolution. And click on displays. Now since the resolution set so small, the window for this is actually too big. <laughs> So you'll want to double click up in this area to minimize it and go over to resolution. And for this demonstration, I will set it to 1920 by 1200. Uh, you can set it to whatever you want. I recommend the highest that you can deal with. Click apply. And your virtual machine will change its resolution. So we'll keep those settings. All right. Next thing you want to do is if there's any updates, install them. So we'll go ahead and click, click that. We'll install them and we'll come back when it's done. So you may be prompted to type in your password. So we'll go ahead and type that in. Then we'll authenticate. And you can see in your software updater, there's a little orange dot next to it. That just indicates that something's going on. And if you click on that, you could see the progress. So we'll let that go through and we'll come back when it's finished. All right, so it may prompt you to restart your computer. Just go ahead and do that now. All right, so here we are restarted. And now we can go ahead and install Multitool. So here I have the link to Multitool. What I'll do is I'll include the link to this download down in the description below. So we'll go ahead and download it real quick. So next we'll want to save the file, so we'll click Save File, click OK, 
and now that's been completed. So we'll go ahead and close that. Now for the rest of this demonstration, I will have the instructions to uh, that were included with this download uh, up on the right hand side of the screen so that we can reference them and follow along. Uh, the guy that uploaded this um, seemed to have missed a few steps that I'll go over in this video that are pretty important to getting this working. So I'll leave this up on the right side so you can follow along, uh, but I will kind of do my own thing here. So next thing we'll do is unpack the multi-tool software. So we'll go to our downloads and we have the Alta Multi-Tool Engineering TAR XZ. So what we'll do is we'll simply just right click on it and go to extract here. So this will take the folder that was inside of this and extract it. And then we'll kind of drag this over here because we do have to do some prerequisites before we even dive into this. Okay, the first thing we'll want to do is go into the terminal. So we'll type Control Alt T on the desktop and that will be our terminal. So we'll be using this for most of the installation process. So the very first thing you'll want to do is install Python. So you'll type sudo apt-get install python 2.7. It'll prompt us for our password. And then we will set, select yes. And then it goes through the installation process. Okay, after that's finished, you'll see the blinking cursor again. So that means we're ready for the next command. So then we'll start by following the instructions and we'll go start on number three there, right here. And so the next thing we'll type in is sudo app get install python dash setup tools. And we'll select yes again and let that run through. Okay, the next command will be sudo apt get install python dash pip. Hit enter and then type y for yes. All right, so we'll go and start on number five there. So we'll type sudo sudo apt get install python dash wx tools. Then we'll type Y for yes. Let that run through. All right, and then the next command will be sudo apt get install python-crcmod. Type Y when it comes up. Okay, so that finished. And the last command we'll type in is pip install pi serial and that has finished so now at this point we're ready to install multi-tool so that was all prerequisites to the installation so what we'll do is go we'll go back into our extracted folder double click and the uh, download includes two uh, versions of multi-tool and it looks like we have the most up-to-date uh, firmware files that Alta had released before they went under. So you have 121RC1 for the EX, 151RC1 for the MX and MXR. This is also for EX and EXR. And then of course 131RC1 for the Supermoto. This recommended JSON file, um, recommended firmware.json file, actually includes a list of all the VIN numbers of the bikes, uh, as well as the target firmware uh, for the machine. So I'll actually explain that a little bit when I go over the firmware update process on the bike. So what you want to do is select uh, or dive into this 33619.e directory.
Okay, so inside this directory, we'll right click and we'll go open in terminal. So I'll close this other guy over here and we'll drag this down. And here is where we'll type in the install command. So here we'll type sudo sudo python setup.py install. We'll type in our password and it will walk through the installation. It's pretty quick. Okay, so straying from the instructions a little bit. Um, so it says to install 336.19.e first, but what it doesn't mention is that you need to actually open up that software uh, in order to continue on and install 337.11. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that. So back on the desktop, we'll right click and go back into the terminal and then we'll type sudo redshift underscore multi-tool type in our password again and so that will actually launch 336.19.e now i don't have the bike hook up, hooked up to this computer at the moment so you will see a minimized version of multi-tool with kind of stripped down functions Okay, so there it is, multi-tool opened. So we'll go ahead and close that. And we'll close out of this terminal. And we'll close out of this terminal. And we'll jump back to the Alta MT engineering directory. And this time we'll dive into 337.11.et. And we'll right click and we'll go to open in terminal and then we will type more or less the same thing we did before which was sudo python setup.py install type in our password and it'll go through the installation process for that new that version as well so really quick we'll go ahead and close this terminal we'll go back to the desktop we'll right click open in terminal and we'll type sudo redshift multi-tool again. Type in the password. And now you can see that 337.11.et is opening. Again, I don't have the bike hooked up to the computer, so you'll see a slimmed down version of it. But I will show uh, the bike hooked up in a second. And there it is. So there you can see it working. So in the next step of the video, I will actually plug in the bike. I'll show you where to plug it in and uh, we'll walk through the features of the software.